Praise the Lord. It is to Him I give the glory. It is to Him I give the praise. I thank God because I didn't find Him. He found me so wretched and so undone but he looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs. I greet Pastor Duroy. I can't live up to his spirit because he's, he has a jumping spirit. Mm -hmm. There's a saying that they used to say, him coming like salt, he means everything. <laughs> But I thank God for his spirit because he has taught me, just in case you don't know, he's younger than me. <laughs> but, we <laughs> but we have a relationship that is so close and I appreciate the wisdom that he's given me. I greet Pastor Val, Pastor Cleveland, Mr. Yvonne, and all the saints in the precious name of Jesus, I do afford it a privilege when I come into the house of the Lord. There is no greater place to be than in the house of the Lord. Many have fallen by the wayside. Many have started the race and has not completed the course. But Jesus saw me and saw something in me that others didn't see. And he gave me the privilege to stand one more time. Just to get into the lesson, could you just put up Psalms 91 for me? It's a well-known topic, Psalm. And I just want to talk about the power of the blood. The power of the blood that ransomed me when we were so undone the blood ransomed us he said he who dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I will say of the Lord he is my refuge he is my fortress my God, in him I will trust. I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth, not ours, his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that flies by the day. Nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but heat shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the rewards of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. That's it, thank you. When I think of the Old Testament, the Old Testament to me gives me history of things that happened. The New Testament to me gave me clarity of what the Old Testament was telling me. When we look at what God done back in the Old Testament when Moses was alive Moses was handing over to Joshua 
And he promised the people that they were going to the promised land. And what happened was that when the people were to go to the promised land, every time God gave them something, it said in the book of Judges, they sinned. Every time they sinned. And God had to send, he had to put somebody in place to save them. So many times we have that in life. God has given us a promise. And instead of embracing the promise, we walk away from God's promise. And though we may sin, there is still hope that God will keep us. But there is time that is running out. There is time when we think that we can always come before God and we can always just do what we want. But time is running out. He's coming soon. Let me just give you, Pastor Duro, I gave you a little snippet of where we're coming from. I was uh, the sixth of seven children. I thank my mother. She brought us up into a church background. That's all I ever knew. When I came in, that's all I knew, church. When I was in Sunday school, I didn't understand the relationship with God. All I knew was this Sunday was church. Wednesday, prayer meeting. Christmas Day, prayer meeting. <laughs> Easter, prayer meeting. Easter, fasting. <laughs> to many people, it sounds like it's military. It sounds like it's difficult. But that's all I ever remembered. Christmas Day, we had to kneel at the bedside. And we had to pray. And sometimes I think to myself, boy, if you tell people that now. But it brought me to where I am today. You need a starting point in life. When you start to grow, you start to make decisions in life. I had the opportunity to leave church. I had the opportunity to do my own thing. But I desired to stay with the Lord. In all the years that I've been through, I was, think I was about 13 or 14 when I started to play the music. And I had many people that was with me and instructed me in how to play. And said, you've got to, and they're not with me anymore. But I thank God that he has given me a gift that not only have I used it in this house, he has given me the anointing and the blood that has covered me through all the years that I've been through He's never forsaken me. I might be a bit rusty. Might miss a couple of notes. When they said to me seven, fours, and twos, ain't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> ain't got a clue. I have to get my calculator to work out what that was. <laughs> but God... When you do something under anointing, no matter what you go through, God has a work for every one of us to do. And without the blood, we can't do it. We can, there are some people that can speak fluently, but without the anointing, when they go home, it falls in weak foundation. But on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. It depends where you plant your seed. It's where it will grow. If you plant it in the sand, it's not going to grow. Sometimes we sing a song, I wish I had a wing like an eagle, I can fly away. Other times you want to hide under the rock. But wherever you go, May God will find you. He will seek you 
when you're not seeking him because he has a work for you. So when you look at the Old Testament, if you look at the judges, the judges, God put them there because whatever situation, he wanted his people to have freedom. So he had to put somebody in a place to lead them. That is why today we have pastors. When I look back when I was a child, no matter what I did, it was, I looked at the pastor like the, 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 the head of the church, like no matter how much I sinned, when he came and preached, my sins went away. But my sins were still there. But I was looking at the pastor. But when you speak about the blood where Jesus died on the cross and they pierced his side and the blood became an atonement for sin, just for me, you can only speak for yourself, but just for me, what the blood does for me. Though I go through life and think to myself, I knew it all, I realized that I never had a communication with God. I saw things, I saw, I heard people preach, but one thing I realized that whenever I went home, there was not a communication I had with God. They spoke about baptism. I said that was a necessity. They spoke about the Holy Spirit. Never understood what that was. But growing up, I realized that there was an anointing on my life. Me and my brother, we have the same mother and father. We have the same blood running through our veins. But we're two different people. But in God, he will seek you out individually through his blood. So don't stand and feel that God has not done anything for you. Your time will come. Can you just pass me my kerchief there? Please? Your time will come. This message is not for everybody. Thank you, sir. Keep playing. This message is not for everybody. But when you're going through hardship and you don't understand what is going on, are you washed in the blood? In the cleansing blood? When is the last time you had a one-to-one -one with Jesus? When I'm at my workplace, they pull me up and they say, we have to have, a, have an appraisal. And straight away I start to panic because I've never always been a good boy. But when I got to the appraisal, it's where you give and you tell them what you want, what your expectations are. And then they will tell you if you if they can give it to you. But when you go to God and you say to God, God, this is what I need. And you turn it to him. And he gives you what he wants to give you. Because it's not by my will, but let his will be done. So when we talk about the blood, he ransomed it for me. Individually, you look at the wars that's happening now. Blood being shed. Innocent blood being shed. But Christ is who I believe in. And I know that whatever situation that we're going to go through, he is my help. Praise the Lord. So my topic, I just want to be very brief with you. When I saw Pastor Val put 45 minutes on there, I laughed. So God, so how do we plead the blood of Jesus? Pastor Val, don't put 45 minutes on there. That's fine. That was Pastor Duray, okay. So when we look at pleading the blood of Jesus... What does it entail? It's a protection for us. It's a defense against satanic attacks. How many times when we go home at night after coming from service, you go home and you find that something ain't quite right in your house. 
Because while you were rejoicing, the devil said, I'm going to wait for you. See if your testimony is true. See if what you say is correct. And when you go home, he's waiting for you. So we pray over satanic attacks. So he puts a defense in front of us so nothing can penetrate. He guards us. He watches and protects us. When you sleep at night, sometimes the devil comes in your dreams. You and Sister Jane was fine. But when you go to bed at night, the devil puts something in your sleep. You wake up in the morning and you're, sister, sister, you're angry at Sister Jane and you don't know why. But the devil puts something in your sleep. Pray before you go to bed. Cover yourself. Cover your household. Cover the lintels on your house. Cover the pillars on your house. When you go in and when you come out, make sure that you are covered under God's anointing. He shields you that no weapon formed against you can prosper. You look at the army back there in the Moses time, bow and arrows, shields, the army now, weapons, guns. But this is a different kind of warfare. This is a spiritual warfare. Praise God. We're looking at mental health issues. We're looking at viruses that you don't see. Viruses that you don't see is coming for you. We're looking at cyber attacks. Facebook. Nobody have 4,000 friends. No one have 4,000 friends. Praise the Lord. And when you want some money, and you say, I'm raising something, you get 20 pounds. Where's your 4,000 friends? But when God calls on us, he is our shield and our fortress. He's our fortification. He builds a wall around us. So many times when the enemy is trying to get in, he builds a fortress around me. Though the enemy sees us like fools, God sees something special in you. So he will build a fortress around you. He will protect you. He will become security around you. He will free you from danger. So many times, we walk like David said, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But what happens? I fear no evil. For who is with me? For God is with me. I remember one time my sister was going through a problem. And she asked for her two brothers to come and visit me and Pastor Dewa. And that time Pastor Dewa used to have that big green coat and the Blakey's in his shoes. And he looked at he looked, he looked intimidating. And my sister was going through a real hard time. And we went all the way down to see her. And when she saw her, us come, she saw that joy. You remember, that joy was in her face. And I always remember that because it reminds me of that whatever we're going through, joy is coming. So we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We fear no evil, for though art, he is with us. In walks the rod and the staff. And it comforted my sister. So I know what God is talking about. Though we go through stuff, he is going to comfort us. He will prepare a table before us. So he will free us from danger. He is our shelter. He is our shelter. So he is our hiding place. When we hide in him. You know, sometimes we used to play a little game where we used to hit people and run, hit people and run. Sometimes we start the trouble and we want shelter. But we start the trouble. But God, he 
is wise. So don't be afraid of satanic attacks, but know that we're still going through them. We will go through them. We will go through troubles. We will go through weapons that's attacking us. We will go through our walls being broken down. We will go through danger. And sometimes we will not, we'll be exposed from hiding places. But when you have the blood of Jesus, it will cover you in all those situations. Be faithful to him. And know that he is God. So how do we then get deliverance? We ask God to release us from being bound. Whatever situation is chaining you, we could pray that God will break the chains. Liberate us from slavery. We need God to give us liberty. Rescue us from difficult situations. Give us reassurance. When a child is crying, what do we do? We give you, everything is going to be all right. He gives us freedom from places that we've been shut in. We pray that God's anointing, the precious blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. Just close your eyes just for one minute and just think to yourself whatever situation you're going through right now. Just take a moment and ask God to release you. Ask God for liberty. Ask God to rescue you from difficult situations, whatever situation you're going through. Just take a moment.